day in history Death is beating, you have rescued me Sing it out, Jesus is alive The empty cross, the empty grave Life eternal, you have won the day Shout it out, Jesus is alive favorite days of the year because one jelly beans mm. and most importantly God pulled off the biggest miracle in history and he showed the world how to make peace peace is proving you care more about each other than winning an argument and on Easter we celebrate how God made peace mm. with us they should call it peaster <laughs> Or maybe not. Anyway, you're probably thinking, why would God need to make peace with me? I mean, we're not in an argument. Well, that's a long story, a really long story. To answer that, you have to go all the way back to the beginning. It's like this. People, you get it? People, people, beep, 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 beep. People were really close to God. And then something happened something bad, and it separated God from the people. God's friendship with us was broken, and something had to be done. But don't worry, God had a plan, and you'll find out all about God's plan in today's story, the greatest story ever told, the story of Easter! Woo! Yeah, 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 Easter! Yeah, Easter! Jelly beans, God's plan. Okay, one more jelly bean. I gotta save these for later. Mm. One more. Mm, that one was popcorn flavored. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. 
Now for an amazing story inspired by the entire Bible. In the beginning, God created a magnificent paradise and everything in it was good. He created water and land and plants and trees and birds and fish and animals. And then from the very dust of the earth, God created a man called Adam. He created a woman called Eve. They were the first two people on earth, made in God's image, living peacefully in paradise. Adam and Eve were friends with God, but then they made a terrible choice. God had given Adam and Eve one rule. You must not eat the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you do, you will certainly die. But the temptation was too great for Adam and Eve. They broke God's rule and what was once a paradise became a broken world. People started telling lies. It was the woman you put here with me. She made me eat it. Brother fought against brother. Ah! No! Selfishness spread through generations. When there had been peace in the garden, now there was pain and sin and death separating people from their creator. But God had a plan to make peace once again with the people he loved so much. Hundreds of years after Adam and Eve broke his rule, God chose a man named Abraham and said, All nations on earth will be blessed because of you. Look up at the sky. Count the stars if you can. That's how many children will be born into your family. So Abraham had a son, Isaac, and Isaac grew up to have two sons of his own, Jacob and Esau, and those two sons had children of their own. Jacob, who God renamed Israel, he himself had 12 sons. So God had given Abraham a huge family just like he promised, but God's people, the Israelites, were still lost and broken, separated from him. They still did not have peace. They didn't have peace when God rescued them from slavery in Egypt, when God led them through the Red Sea to escape their enemies. Okay, great. But what are we supposed to eat out here in the desert? <laughs> Sand? <laughs> the nation of Israel didn't have peace when God gave them a new law. These commandments are hard. We want a king like all the other nations. They didn't even get peace when God gave them a king. The king's laws are no fair. We want a new God, like all the other nations. Nope, nothing gave God's people lasting peace. They were still lost and broken and separated from God for thousands of years. But God had not forgotten the promise he made to Abraham. All nations on earth will be blessed because of you. God still had a plan to show the people just how much he cared for them. He knew this broken world would never be able to rescue itself, so God made a way. God sent his son, Jesus, to bring peace on earth once and for all. Jesus grew up and he taught people love and compassion, forgiveness and grace. He healed the sick and befriended the outcasts. He saw what was wrong and made it right. He loved the world and its people so deeply he gave his life on a cross to pay for the sins of the whole world. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. In Colossians, the Apostle Paul tells us God made peace through Christ's blood, through his death on the cross. When Jesus chose to give up his life, he paid the cost of every sin ever committed and every sin that had yet to be committed. People no longer had to be separated from God. But in the three dark days immediately following Jesus' death, his followers didn't understand all of that yet. They huddled in the dark, afraid that they too might be arrested or even killed. Who's there? Early on the morning of the third day, Mary Magdalene arrived at the home where the disciples were staying. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. We don't know where they have put him. The disciples stared at each other in shock. Then, Peter and John lunged for the door. They raced each other all the way back to the tomb where Jesus had been placed. The tomb really is empty. There are the linen cloths they wrapped him in. Peter and John returned home, still uncertain and confused. And Mary Magdalene, who had followed them, stayed behind in the garden. And as she wept, she noticed a man standing nearby. And at first, she thought he was the gardener. Sir, did you carry Jesus away? 
Tell me where you put him. Mary. The instant the man spoke, Mary Magdalene knew immediately who he was. It was Jesus, alive again. Teacher. Overjoyed, Mary returned to the disciples to share the incredible news. I have seen the Lord. It was true. Jesus had come back from the dead. He's more powerful than sin, more powerful than death. And through him, we can have peace with God and work toward peace with others as God intended from the very beginning. So it's like this. All of history, every moment of God's story led up to the life, death, and resurrection of God's Son, Jesus. Sin separated people from God. That was a problem that we couldn't fix. So God sent his son, Jesus. And after Jesus's death, he beat sin. And after that, he beat death itself. So I guess you could say that Jesus was kind of like a bridge between people and God. That made it possible for us to reconnect with God. The apostle Paul once wrote, God was pleased to bring all things back to himself. God made peace through Christ's blood by his death on the cross. Because of Jesus, we can be close to God again. We're at peace. Jesus is alive and he's made a bridge that will last forever. So here's the one thing to remember today. God made peace with us. Remember that this Easter. Remember that every day. Really think about what Jesus did for you and tell God how grateful you are. And don't just keep it to yourself either. Share the peace of God with others by telling them about Jesus or by loving them like Jesus loves us. I'll see you next time. What happened to the rest of the bridge? We were almost done. Have you been eating the peeps? Mm -hmm. Welcome to the So and So Show. I'm Brandon. And I'm Lawson. And Happy, Happy Easter. Easter. We are so glad you're hanging out with us on this very special day. We sure are. And now, some interesting facts about Easter. Oh. Cool. cool. I got a rope. Watch this. Boom. Uh -huh. Cool. All right. And you got the egg, a little <laughs> egg. Oh, jelly beans. Oh, fun. Okay. All right. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. Interesting Easter fact number one. Americans consume more than 16 billion jelly beans every year. That is actually enough jelly beans to circle the globe three times. That's a lot of jelly beans. Do you have any more facts? Do I have more facts? Brandon, I'm a fax machine. You're a fax machine? Forget it. Oh! oh. Whew. oh. Good catch. Thank you. Oh, okay, here we are. Interesting Easter fact number two. On April 1st, 2007, the largest ever Easter egg hunt had 9,753 children searching for 501,000 eggs. That's nuts. No, it was eggs. It's an egg hunt. It's right here. Interesting Easter fact number three. Ah! 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 It's Bible story.
story time with Kellen. Oh. Thank you. No! Oh, <laughs> Hey guys, happy Easter to you both. Right back at you, Kellen. Happy Easter to you. I love Easter. Easter's so fun. I'm so glad today is Easter. What story are you telling, Kellen? Uh, Easter? Great. Okay, before I tell you about Easter, I think it's best if I give you a little backstory. In fact, we should really start in the beginning. In the beginning, God created the earth and the sky, and, well, everything. He made a man named Adam and a woman named Eve. Hey, I'm Adam. Do you come here often? I'm Eve, and, uh, no, I just got here. Cool. Me too. Adam and Eve lived peacefully in paradise with God until they made a very poor choice. You see, God had only given them one rule. Don't eat the fruit from a certain tree. But... Hey... Let's eat from that tree. Once they broke God's rule, the world became broken, and sin separated people from God and broke their relationships with one another. There was no more peace, but God had a plan. Years later, God chose a man named Abraham. I'm old, like really old, like first generation iPod old. He was old. And even though he didn't have any children, God had promised Abraham that the whole world would be blessed through his descendants. The whole world? <laughs> Did he say descendants? So Abraham's wife, Sarah, had a baby Ooh. named Isaac. And Isaac grew up and had two babies. And then they grew up and had even more babies. Abraham's descendants grew and grew, and they became known as the Israelites, God's chosen people. But they still didn't have peace. They didn't have peace when the Israelites were taken as slaves in Egypt. Let my people go! And they didn't have peace when God chose Moses to lead people out of slavery. The Lord has parted the sea so we can escape Egypt. Follow me. They didn't have peace when God led them to the promised land. Where's the milk and honey? I thought it'd be bigger. I wish we had a king like the other nations. So God gave them a king. Hello. I am your king. Meh, I've seen better. We want a new God. <clears throat> Nothing brought God's people peace. But God wasn't finished yet. You see, hundreds of years later in the town of Bethlehem, a descendant of Abraham that would bless the whole world was about to be born. The baby's name was Jesus, and he would become a man who loved people deeply. And he would show us how to love people the way he did. So Jesus loves us so much that he gave his life on a cross to pay for our sins. The Apostle Paul wrote, God was pleased to bring all things back to himself. That's because of what Christ has done. God made peace through Christ's blood by his death on the cross. Jesus paid for every sin ever committed and every sin that would ever be committed. People would no longer have to be separated from God. And with God's help, people would make peace with one another. But the story of Easter doesn't end with Jesus' death on the cross. On the morning of the third day, Mary Magdalene went to Jesus' tomb to cover his body with spices. That's odd. Someone has rolled away the stone. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Mary Magdalene ah! ran to find Jesus' disciples. Peter and John returned with her, and in the tomb, they found linen cloths that were used to wrap Jesus' body. But they did not find Jesus, so they returned home, leaving Mary behind in the garden. I can't believe Jesus is gone. Hello, sir. Y you must be the gardener. Did you carry Jesus away? Tell me where you put him. Mary. Teacher. And as soon as the man spoke, Mary knew it was Jesus, alive. 
He had come back from the dead. Jesus is more powerful than sin. He's more powerful than death. And because of him, we can have peace with God and with each other as God intended from the beginning. And that is the story of Easter. We should tell that story every year. We do. Awesome. It is awesome. Before Jesus, we had lost our connection with God. Our relationship was broken. Jesus' death and resurrection, it helped rebuild what was broken and reconnect us with our Creator. Amazing. Thanks, Kellen. No problem. Peace out. Oh, and happy Easter to everyone. Happy Easter. <laughs> Only one thing left to do now. Ooh, I was thinking the same thing. Oh. Huh. <laughs> so, uh, was that supposed nope. to- Nope! Reveal the question! Why does Easter matter? What do you say, Lawson? I guess it's really the reason we're here. It's true. Jesus' resurrection is the most amazing thing that has ever happened. That's why we can't stop talking about it. What do you think? Why does Easter matter? Talk about it together. We'll see you next week for a brand new show. Bye. Happy Easter. Happy rope. What are you going to do with all that? Make a fort. <laughs> oh, a rope fort. Yes. First of its kind. You can't come in. Huh, why not? You don't have the password. The password's rope. Oh, well now I can come in. Wow, what a great show today. I love Easter. Me too. I thought you were very good today. Yeah? Totally. And you look great too. Have you lost weight? I have. Thank you for noticing. No problem. I also noticed that we seem to be out of popsicles. Any idea where they might have all gone? Uh, what? I don't. How could that happen? I mean, I didn't. Uh, look, over there! Oh, Lawson, 